All right, if everyone can take their seats, we're going to get started. First of all, um, I want to thank everyone for attending. Uh, it looks like we have another great turnout for a 313 event, uh, despite the, the horrible weather. So, so thank you for coming out. Um, I want to thank, uh, first and foremost, the sponsor of tonight's event, Millennial Media. Without the sponsors, none of this happens, so thank you. We also, uh, we partnered with the uh, AdCraft uh, Executive Learning Series uh, to put this event together, so I want to thank them and their sponsors as well, which include Google, Campbell Ewald, True Car, and Team Detroit, so thanks to all those guys. And just a couple of uh, upcoming events to mention. Um, obviously, we've got tomorrow, we've got the AdCraft uh, Oktoberfest at Dicko Dow's. Um, should be a good time. And then uh, the Wednesday before Thanksgiving is the sixth uh, 313 anniversary party. So hopefully all of you guys can make it out for that as well. Uh, we've got a great panel tonight. Um, should be very educational and entertaining. Our moderator is uh, Marcus Starzl, who is the Senior Vice President of Sales at Millennial Media. Marcus leads Millennial's sales organization. He's a veteran of interactive media sales uh, with prior roles at advertising.com and is also a former nuclear submarine officer. So, <laughs> uh, a warm welcome please for Marcus. energy and excitement there is for mobile in this community and it's just uh, great to see uh, for certain. Uh, before we get started, I wanted to thank, so Millennial Media, we love to sponsor stuff like this, but Jim Ryan, who is up in the booth back there somewhere, uh, put this all together and really worked with the 313 folks and I just wanted to do a special thanks to uh, Jim who's Who's playing AV guy right now, as he did in high school, I think, as well. Um, okay, so let me introduce the panelists. We had originally planned to run through a couple slides. We're having technical difficulties, so uh, what we will do is try to keep this as interactive as possible and really get the best thoughts, words, and actions out of our panelists who are all of them a very lot and mobile um, throughout the entire evening. If you tweet anything with 313 digital using the hashtag 313 digital, I will read it off of, you know, I will ask questions real time. So there are cards in front of you where you can write questions and they'll get passed up to me as the event goes on and we'll try to uh, break up with questions from the audience. But at any time, please just tweet with the hashtag 313 digital and I will try to work that into the panel. So uh, starting from your right and to the left, um, Brian McClary. Brian is responsible for social and emerging media at Ford. Welcome, Brian. Chuck Schultz. Please hold your applause to the end. Uh, <laughs> Vice President of New Media at Starcom. Joy Liuzzo. I got it. Uh, responsible, does some great mobile research. If you don't follow her on Twitter, please do. Uh, she's always throwing some serious facts out there at Inside Express. <clears throat> Angela Steele, CEO of Ansible. Welcome, Angela. And Angela, sorry. And Connie Ziga at uh, WDA. So I would love to just start off with a very simple question to uh, really get, uh, kind of lay the groundwork, because uh, without our slides, we can't do that. So I would love, and, and in no particular order, uh, each of you is up here for a reason. This room is packed for a reason. What has each of you excited about mobile, where it is today, and where it's going? Hello? Okay, so I guess uh, one thing that I wanted to talk about in terms of the slides was just to kind of set up uh, mobile and kind of how um, I think some preconceptions come in. People come in with a particular <coughs> angle on mobile or something like this. 
And when you think about mobile, one of the biggest areas that we're focused on, or at least excited about, is in the area of convergence. So you think about all the tablet growth that's gone on, and uh, the, a lot of the entertainment-based apps, and being able to interact with a new ecosystem that's emerging with uh, you know, being able to connect and interact with television programming and things like this with an iPad and connecting to, to a television, right? This is a space that being able to consume content, the whole disruption, video, you know, video content, uh, Hulu, Netflix, companies like that are, you know, available on pretty much every platform today. TV, internet, mobile devices, game consoles, things like that. And mobile plays a component in that in terms of a distribution outlet. So for us, as this ecosystem is emerging and being very disruptive uh, as it relates to existing traditional cable providers like Comcast, DirecTV, and those likes, um, there, there's a shift about. And you know, for us, it's understanding that marketplace and really identifying the opportunities for advertisers and marketers to look at the space and map out a game plan. Um, so that, that's one big area that we're focused on and really think about as we go through tonight that mobile isn't just, you know, ads on Pandora, that pop-up rich media, things like that, that you, you need to start thinking about, um, you know, you're watching a TV show and you're interacting with your iPad and TV, this is like this in an environment, is going from a TV-based experience into a web-based experience on a tablet. So think about the broad scope that mobile could potentially play. The other piece that I see mobile uh, really having a play is with hyperlocal. So the ability to uh, have ads, whether they're geofenced or something like this, is we're thinking more and more about adding layers of localization to our plans, uh, be it through television, print, out of home, different ways that we can activate media. Uh, mobile is certainly going to play a big role in that um, in terms of targeting and using data as a means to identify opportunities and be it, and we'll talk a little bit about it, I think, uh, the, where, what these phones are able to produce, right, in terms of sensory data, location, proximity, um, that kind of stuff, uh, will be very interesting and help drive targeting in the space. And to echo what Chuck was saying, from a research perspective and a consumer behavior perspective, we're seeing an evolution of expectations. So have you guys seen the uh, YouTube video that's going around about the magazine that's broken? The baby that thinks the magazine's broken? Okay, that's going to be an adult expectation coming up here in a year, two years. If something's not interactive, if they're not able to go and get information, if they're not able to kind of take action immediately, it's broken. And that's the thing we need to be thinking about. It's cool that we can do all these rich media ads. It's cool that we can do video. But we can't just leave them hanging. We can't just have, you know, just this push them to a, a static site or anything else like that. We need to make sure this is interactive. We need to make sure it's not broken. One of the things that we are most excited about that seems to be having the biggest influence in the mobile space is the fact that this year, for this year, for the first time, there will be more smartphones than PCs in the marketplace around the world. So we are at a major tipping point in the industry this year where mobile is becoming the lead device. It is the device that consumers have with them at all times. It will be the device that will program all other devices. And if you think about what all other screens will become, they will become the dumb screen that is programmed by the mobile device. Um, we've started to see this at CES last year where mobile devices get put into a docking station and it, it becomes the brain of the computer. We're going to see this evolve where the mobile device will become the set-top box in your home. You drop it into your set-top box and it controls your television. So we're going to start to see, the we already are seeing, the mobile device become the remote control for all other, um, all other devices and consumers are using that, it's tethered to them at all times. And the most interesting thing about that is the data and the consumer understanding that we're going to have when we can see what people are doing and how they're interacting with other media, how, what they're doing with the phone outside of the home, in the store, on the dealer lot, what have you. You totally stole my thunder. I was going to say like the same things. But uh, at Ford, something we're really excited about, and one thing I'll preface, I'll apologize if I talk too fast. I, I really geek out about this stuff, and when I get excited, I talk too, much, talk too fast, so I'll apologize now. But something that we're really excited about at Ford is just the, the, the speeds that phones are starting to jump in and do now. Like, 
You know, you look at the rise of 4G, you look at what the new iPhone can do with the camera, and you, know, you start looking at this device that is attached to everybody's hip at all times. So that's something we're really excited about and just, you know, the attention that mobile's getting. It's, it's really great for myself, you know, working in social and emerging media, but, you know, it works on mobile. So every program that we start working on is, oh, what can we do in mobile? What can we do in social? And I think, you know, devices talking to each other is the really cool thing that's going on right now is like you look at what everybody's doing while they're watching TV they're on their phone or they're on their tablet device and you know these devices are just gonna start getting faster and faster and faster and now you know the device I have in my pocket right now is like two or three times more powerful than the computer I got when I went away to school so just the, the constant evolution of these devices just moving faster and faster at the same time and just trying to keep up is, is a real challenge but you know I think we're ahead of it a little bit but it's just you know trying to evolve with those changes what we're excited about is clearly the pace of innovation that, that we see in this space. But the fact that we have a truly measurable media um, and that's truly interactive and that is for the first time really customizable, I really think that we're only at the very, very beginning of what we're gonna see in the uh, technology evolution here because we have a device that knows so much about you. It knows about your preferences, it knows your location, it knows what you're doing, it knows if you're traveling or not. The next generation uh, technology can dip into the phone, can see if you have voicemails waiting, can see if you have unread texts. It can do in, uh, incredible things that understand the state and presence uh, of yourself and how receptive you might be to an ad at that time. And, uh, and can allow technologists to, to uh, present an experience to you that's appropriate. Uh, for whatever it is that you're trying to do. And this entire thing is measurable. I mean, you can actually, you don't have to guess and draw funnel diagrams and wow people with goofy PowerPoints. I mean, you can actually see it working. Uh, and you can see it working immediately. So we're very excited about how tangible this media is. I, and just to build on that, what, what's interesting is we're kind of in this mobile 1.0, right? Where um, everyone realized maybe 18 to 24 months ago that we needed a website, we needed a mobile presence. We're losing, there's a lost opportunity. When we looked at our logs, our web logs, and realized how many people were coming into our site with uh, Android or iPhone and going, holy cow, that's 60,000 visitors that we're delivering this experience to. So they all, we all went out and built these websites and they're static, right? Kind of unidimensional, but we have a presence now and we can start activating other types of media. But to your point, what these devices are able to uh, start collecting data. First off, uh, you can touch them, right? They know where they're at. They have a skin. You can interact with them. It's intimate. They, um, they're they connected to your social graph, right? That's all data that could potentially be leveraged. Uh, they have sensors. Today, the phones today have three or four sensors, right? An accelerometer, GPS, uh, uh, something for the compass. Um, in 24 to 18, or 18 to 24 months, you're going to be you know, seeing 10 to 12, 13 different sensors in there. Motion, uh, barometer, right? So you can get the barometric pressure. So not only do you have, seriously, like, when you, not only the GPS piece, but the barometric pressure as you go up each floor in your building, your skyscraper, the barometric pressure changes. So that could get a better uh, sense as to your true location. This type of data hasn't been leveraged. Right? And this is the, the world that we're about to go into, is how we step up our presence, make them more uh, the payoff, if you will, the experience that we're developing for the consumer that leverages and combines and brings all that data together, that sensory data. Can, can I be contrarian just for a second? Sure. Okay, all, that, all that's really cool, but the one thing I want to make sure that we don't get lost in is cool technology and what the hell it means to the consumer. Sorry, there's, there's, and this, not, not that this GPS information or anything else like that. It's critical. But there's a lot of things that are going on right now in mobile that are very, very cool and very, very slick, but don't really resonate with the consumer because it's just kind of a slick technology. And sorry, augmented reality is just one that comes to mind. And I'm sorry for anybody that does it here. It's, it's not quite there yet, right? In terms of the consumer experience. That being said, I know, look at you, I told you, see? I, we had a conversation, we were gonna do this earlier. But don't, I know. But it's, you know, but that's, that's the trick that I think we need to understand, is keep the consumer top of mind in what their experience and what you hope they get out of it, instead of just the technology-wise. Yeah, but think about, so, so you've got this great device. It tells you when your friends wanna to talk to you, either through notification through the email or through phone or through SMS. 
It's, uh, you can talk to it, Google search. You can uh, look up and do this augmented reality thing and it, and it enhances your experience, it's like superhuman skills, right? You all of a sudden have this binocular that can give you great stuff. Those are all like one-off things and those are really cool, but the next gen is gonna begin to bring the apps that bring those together and it really enrich, because you look at Google and local search, the payoff is when you're mobile, you want that right now. So um, I just want to bring in a Twitter comment really quick. Someone <laughs> has a pretty relevant Twitter comment. So do we need to stop thinking phone but think mobile device? Yes, we do. It's not really a phone anymore. But jumping to Star Trek is probably a bit too far. Which, no, which, no. Which is, it's, is that what you're it's, saying? It's a communication, okay? It's a communication tool. It's a communication channel. Just like the tablet is, just like the computer is, just like the television is, it's, it's a way to have a conversation with the consumer. And to your point, what I think is, I agree with you, when the device themselves and when this whole experience gets to be less painful, all those things you're talking about are going to be critical. But right now, the, the device itself, no matter how cool the uh, iPhone 4S is, or the iPhone 5 is going to be, whatever those are, it's still a clunky thing that you have to reach out, kind of interact with. It's, it's The UI isn't where it needs to be yet to make all those things mm -hmm. critical. So we are still in the 1.0 stage. And it, it is more than a communications channel, though. And the thing that we talk with clients about is that there's a, a tremendous utility component to mobile that doesn't exist with other vehicles. You have your maps, you have, you do have your communications, but you have all of the other tools in your apps. That's why the App Store has thousands and thousands of apps that people download. There's a utility function that exists in the mobile space that doesn't exist elsewhere. And the implication for marketers is that you have to think about what is the purpose of that technology, to your point. It, technology without a purpose is completely useless. Um, and that's why augmented reality gets this bad rap because so much of what you see is just silly and not useful. But we're going to start to see more useful um, purposes of augmented reality as well. It's just like everything else, it needs an objective, it needs a purpose, and it needs to deliver value to the consumer. Yeah, I think that's the big thing that, you know, us as marketers, how can we take advantage of all these great new technologies? Like, I'm sure there's 50 things and phones that are coming out now that we have no clue how we're going to use yet. So barometric pressure, pressure might not seem relevant now, to your point, but, you know, it just adds another layer of targeting. You can start getting on top of all these consumers. And we were talking earlier, it's, it's mobile is still somewhat web 1.0, and I think there's a lot of advancement for it. But, you know, the marketers that figure out how to utilize all this great technology in these, you know, devices is, is what's really going to give you a you know, a first mover advantage. So the person that cracks, how do you Siri first, will be the one who gets written up and, you know, everybody starts talking like, oh my God, how, I can't believe that marketer X now can do this. So what if you picked up Siri and you said, I want to buy a car. And of course, I hope it says, go to your Ford dealership and do it. But, you know, that's, you know, how, who's going to crack that code first? So Siri's really great. And I get in arguments with my boss, Scott Kelly, all the time that, you know, I talk about Siri because I'm an Apple fanboy. And he says, oh, you could do that on Android a year ago. And I'm like, oh, you can, you can't. But that's where the big opportunity is. So who's going to crack that code first? Who was the first person to jump in and mess around with the, you know, the, the, the accelerometer on the iPhone? I'm sure when it came up, you're like, all right, what are you going to do with that? But now we're using it to shake and randomize, you know, something on your device. So, uh, yeah, I agree. Like, you know, is that useful? But it may not seem useful now, but in four or five months, we might say, oh, yeah, how, why weren't we using that before? Like, when LBS first started coming out and using the geo-tracking device in your phone, I'm like, yeah, whatever, how can I use that? But now we can use it to say, okay, you're in Novi, Michigan, you want to go do these three things. So it's just another layer you can add top of and how do you utilize that new technology? So I think the you, closing words? Do it. Well, I was going to say, so <clears throat> yeah, just to bring it back down to reality, not the super phone tech world, uh, but so today we have 1.0, right? We've all got these great sites. They're static. Uh, but as we think about how we execute ads and our landing page strategy, thinking about awareness as you're moving down your funnel, right? Awareness, your opinion, your consideration, your purchase or shopping type activities, your owner experiences to, uh, you know, build, leveraging the loyalty programs and things like that and building advocacy, right? So as we think about how we execute on all those different aspects of the funnel,